What's up, Cradle fans? This is Banff here, and we have an official video. This isn't this isn't a podcast. This is we're gonna talk about Waybound or more. I'm gonna talk at you about Waybound and just impose my views on your face and your ears. Uh, so a couple things, a couple housekeeping things. First of all, uh, my excitement for making videos is kind of back. And I have y'all to thank for that because the last video I made, y'all loved it. And I didn't love it, but y'all loved it. So then I started to love it a little bit. Uh, the comments were cool. And now we're here. I'm honestly considering doing an information requested podcast every Friday, which is awkward because today's Friday and I'm not doing one because I'm doing a way bound video video exclusively about Waybound. And while I'm probably going to be wrong about a lot of stuff, maybe I won't be. I was pretty okay with the last book. But I'm doing this one early uh, without reading, the, without having access to the back cover. Uh, this one's almost, if I had, honestly, let's just get into it. Like, we're going to get into it. I'm going to say what I was about to say anyway. Um, let's talk about Waybound. That this whole movie, this whole video, Jesus. This whole video is about my thoughts around Waybound, what I think will the plot will be, how far I think each of the characters will advance, uh, what I think is going on with the Abaddon. Uh, this will not be a video where we talk about or I talk about plot points that get plot points from old books that get uh, closed in the epilogue. I'm going to make another video specifically about the epilogue because I want to do some more thinking around like what are some plot points from other books that I've forgotten about that I really want to be uh, wrapped up. You know what I mean? So we're going to avoid talking about the epilogue because in I, I don't know for sure. No one knows for sure. And after Dragon Con my thoughts on this have changed a little bit but originally i thought the book was going to be like the plot of the 12th book then some closing action for the series then a shit ton of epilogue i don't know if that's going to be the way it goes anymore based on some comments will made at dragon con now i'm starting to think it's going to be like the plot of the book and the end of the series are kind of merged and part of the epilogue is merged because you were closing out some plot lines, then some more epilogue, which doesn't sound too different from what I said at first, but it is in that there's like not three separate chunks there. It's just going to be a blend. Uh, so I'm going to have a different video about the epilogue, but let's talk about this coming book it's the final book there's going to be a ton of action uh where are our characters now before we get into this plot so at the end of reaper all of the main characters enter the hyperbolic time chamber that was crafted by linden with the help of zeal after everybody stole all the things that was needed to make it i guess they are on the cloud ship of linden headed over the trackless sea towards the the weeping dragon i don't know honestly i should know this but i don't remember how long of a time dilation they're gonna have uh but whatever who cares they're gonna have some time dilation hyperbolic time chamber it's gonna be a great time so we're gonna get a training montage uh at the beginning then we're gonna go into some fighting some problem solving, some soul smithing, some Abadan action, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but all of our main characters are in the cloud ship inside the hyperbolic time chamber training. Um, outside of the scope of the iteration of Cradle, we have the Abaddon in a really weird conflict. Machiel has set up Osriel and Surreal into a shitty situation. Osriel has several of his powers bound. Maybe I, for those of you listening on uh, Spotify, uh, I'm throwing up quotes. Maybe 
uh, because it's Osriel. We don't know what tricks he has up his sleeve. He seems super confident, and he's a his ability to know what his what like the secondary, tertiary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, effects of his actions are and how they affect fate seem to be pretty on point. So we have a confrontation between Cereal, Osriel, and the Vrochir. While Machiel eats, well, he's not going to eat popcorn because he doesn't believe in anything. Um, I don't know what he believes in. Protecting fate. So he won't be eating popcorn, but metaphorically he'll be watching while eating popcorn. Hoping Osriel dies. Hoping Cereal survives. And then he can consolidate his power and be uh, the big benevolent evil guy, et cetera, et cetera. So that is kind of where we're at now. Lots going on. Uh, but first, we need to talk about um, our our first indicator of what is going to happen in the book, the Chondra effect. Now, I've explained this before, but the Chondra effect is was, I don't know, originally brought up by... Uh, Condra, a community member, also an artist. A lot of her stuff has been and shared all over. Uh, but she noticed that the title of the book is what the main character gets or one of the main characters gets or is in some regard at the end of the book. Um, the only super meta exceptions are unsold because he starts out unsold and then he leaves the valley unsold still. Um but in Soul Smith, Linden becomes a Soul Smith. In Black Flame, Linden gets the path of the Black Flame, and part of the book is a training montage of him becoming a sacred artist using the path of Black Flame. In Book Four, Linden and team uh, join the Sky Sworn, so they become Sky Sworn. In Book Five, Linden gets himself some Ghost Water times Infinity in the form of Dross. Go team. In Book Six, everyone becomes an Underlord. <laughs> Uh, in book seven, Yaren becomes uncrowned. Uh, Linden almost becomes uncrowned, and they're in the uncrowned tournament. At the end of book eight, Linden gets himself a winter steel badge of the empty symbol, signifying the void. Uh, in book nine, Linden returns to his home and uh, learns that he will leave behind uh, a bloodline. This one's a little bit more meta, whatever. Uh, in book 10, uh, we and all of creation fear the Reaper. And the Reaper returns, spoiler, in the form of Athan. Athan, the angel of death, also known as Osriel or the Reaper. The Reaper returns. So a main character gets to be the Reaper again or whatever. And then in uh, the end of book 11 or 75% of the way through book 11, Linden becomes a dread god by eating a dread god. Now, I know some of you are like, he's only a partial dread god because it only went up his arm. And I'm sure you didn't say it like that, but uh, that's my voice for uh, random randomness on the internet. Well, maybe, but he has powers of a dread god. He is stronger than a herald. He can fight against monarchs and not insta die, which I think is what happens with heralds if they fight one on one with a monarch and insta die. And so, yeah, Linden is, for all intents and purposes, a dread guard with monarch level powers. Now, this is kind of an important plot point for Waybound. Again, make my make my face bigger way bound they're gonna be way bound <laughs> so they're probably gonna enter the way at the end or at the end of i don't know at the end of some part of this book they're gonna go to the way they're bound for the way but they gotta they have some housekeeping uh to get to first which brings me to uh how do we get there how do we get from where they are now until they're way bound well there's some there's a lot of stuff one could assume but there's some very obvious things that are definitely going to happen. One, the, I mean, they have their training montage, which I mean, I'm going to skip and talk about that more specifically because there's some stuff in there that I want to bring up. But how do we get there? We have the training montage where they're going to get stronger because Lyndon needs people to be at his level. Um, one, to solve the problems on Cradle 
and two, uh, to solve the executor problem out in uh, multiverse space. He needs a team. Ethan wanted to build a team of people that could keep up with him. Well, that that cat has gotten out of the bag, so to speak, because Ethan, no one's going to keep up with the Reaper. Uh, so now it's up to Lyndon to take on the uh, philosophy of his mentor and bring he's going to bring Yaren with him anyway because she's almost there. Uh, but then the rest of his team, because as I've mentioned before, I think the one way that you can avoid the corruption of interfering with the fate of planets is to not do it by yourself because then you'll slowly go insane as we've seen happen 100% of the time. But if you have people around you, like this band of brothers concept where the people that you care about, that you grew up with, that you trust are with you and have your back, that that will connect you with them and you will then be resistant to outside influence. Humanity is what anchors generations to the way. Humanity is what is going to anchor our team to order in the way and not be corrupted by chaos. I mean, that's just what that that's been set up since book two. So I'm pretty sure that solves the executor problem. So Lyndon, not knowing that that's a problem he's solving, he just needs help on Cradle, is going to help get the rest of his people up as high as they can go. And in the next section, I'm going to talk about how far I think each of them are going to get. Uh, so that's that's what's going on. Then there's an Abaddon situation, which I'll talk about what I think happens there. And I have a strong feeling that we're going to get a decent amount of Abaddon chapters early on because during the training montage, they're training. And I'm sure there's interesting stuff happening around the planet, but there's interesting stuff happening in the way as well. And so I think that that's going to be a good time to get kind of set the stage all around. Uh, but first, let's talk about the training montage, uh, because a lot of people, I mean, we, we read these books because uh, of the good writing. But also, I'm assuming many of you like the progression fantasy component where people get stronger. So that's the whole point of the first part of this book. Lyndon uh, will not be getting stronger because I don't think he can get stronger until he eats more dread gods and then leaves and then starts advancing in the higher magic, uh, like a different magic system from a higher plane of existence. Um, but there's some con there's some like sacred arts concepts uh, that I that I want to bring up at some point in this video around what happens when you ascend out of the planet. Um, anyway so that's coming i hope how strong will everyone get uh well first we need to determine how strong everyone is currently and this is going to be an interesting thing because we've got orthos as an underlord black flame dragon turtle we've got little blue as a natural spirit uh a pure like a spirit of, of, of pure madra both of them are linked to linden uh, we've got Mercy, who is currently an overlord. We have Zeal, who is back to being an arc lord. <laughs> arc lord, arch lord. Um, Zeal's back to his original level. And Zeal was starting to be able to sense components of an icon that he resonates with. So he's starting to sense the way in a similar vein as to when Yaren was able to sense the way when she was exposed to it uh, during Uncrowned. And then finally, we have Yaren, uh, who is a herald with strong affinities for blood and the sword. And those all are of our folks. And then Linda, of course. But Linda can't progress any further. So Orthos is currently, I think, the weakest in terms of spiritual strength. I say that because in the excerpt that we got at Dragon Con, he was... Oh, actually, I didn't give the order, did I, in the last video? Well, spoiler alert, 
I'm about to give part of the order. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ortho succumbs to Lyndon's spiritual pressure first. It just does. Um, and so I think his spiritual uh, power is less than Little Blue. His combat potential is probably much higher just because he has experience of hundreds of years. Um, and he, I mean, he's kind of, <laughs> he kind of reminds you of Courage, the cowardly dog, where he's scared of everything, but he does it anyway um, from the strength of friendship. So Orthos um, has probably the clearest path to power out of everyone. If I'm being quite honest, I don't know why I need to be quite honest, but he has all the remnants of the Black Dragon. So he just has to absorb the power. And he has Linden with a ton of Black Flame potent power uh, once he can handle it. So he needs to basically just be processing potent Black Flame and progressing through the ranks of Lord as a sacred beast. It will be interesting to see what form he chooses. I'm not sure where he'll go with that. He, I mean, he's, he's Orthos, you know? Turtle Horde. Uh, by the way, I'll be talking about this in my next uh, podcast video, the the Turtle Horde. So Orthos is going to be an Archlord Dragon. That's, I mean, I feel like that's just what he's going to be. I don't see him getting further than that because he just has so far to go, so far to go. So if he comes out as an Archlord, Archlord, that would be right where I expect him to be. Little Blue, uh, similarly. I don't know enough about how spirits progress other than the fact that they just need to basically eat pure Madra and then they can grow stronger or like whatever. Um, they need to be around dense aura so they can grow faster. It's whatever. So little blue, I think will also be around the level of an arch Lord in terms of, of potency. I don't know how much stronger she got while training with Yaren when they went to uh, train and assault the Red Moon Hall. So we'll have to see how strong she is. Uh, because she's not as strong as Mercy, but she's stronger than Orthos. I think because of the fact that she got stronger by absorbing um, spirits in the last book. Uh, blood. Yeah, she got... she what are those called um the blood shadows man she was absorbing a bunch of blood shadows so she's stronger uh i think she'll be arch lord maybe like arch lord harrow level man it's just weird talking about little blue in that and that how, that being that strong arch lord arc lord i think is where she's going to be at pretty sure then we've got mercy Mercy will get to Archlord easily while training with everybody else. I'm not sure because in, in a bunch of other books, uh, time dilation affects your ability to touch the like the Tao. Um, I don't think that happens so much in these books because when uh, Yaren was training for the Uncrowned Tournament with the Sages, they were trying to help her touch on the icon and didn't seem to have an issue with it while under the dilation like while under te temporal effects of time dilation so i see yeah i see i see mercy advancing to arch lord and then being able to use her herald page for periods of time i don't see her being a herald yet but I see her being able to access that page for long periods of time without dying. Next, we have Zeal. And again, Zeal is an Archlord looking to become a Sage. And this is kind of what I was getting at when I was talking about Mercy, in that Zeal might not be able to become a Sage while inside the temporal situation. But he very well could as soon as he steps out. I could see that happening. Um, so he'll probably be going through a lot of willpower training and uh, being taught about sage things from Linden, which is cool because it would be very nice for there to be another sage. 
because of what I think Lyndon's going to be doing during this training montage. Um, so Yaren, what is Yaren going to be up to? Yaren will be trying to get as close to Harold as possible. I think she'll be fighting against Lyndon a lot to improve her combat training. But she has the remnant of... I think she's got the remnant of both the Blood Moon Herald and um, Sage of Red Faith. She has the remnant of the Sage of Red Faith for sure. And I'm interested to see what that remnant does. Because regardless, I'm Yaren is going to be progressing close to the edge of Herald. And I think she's going to be using a lot of the blood remnant type stuff to potentially resonate with the blood icon. A lot of folks have, have tried to theorize what her icons will be because I very much see her becoming a monarch. Not by the time that they exit the time chamber, but during the book at some point. I think she very much will become a monarch. And I think it will be with the blood icon. Maybe the sword icon, but I think the blood icon. And maybe she she's just... She does extra work and she can get both. I don't know. What do y'all think? Okay. She's going to be like absorbing potent blood aura and blood madra and improving her own power. And so she's just going to be so much more in tune with blood that I think. I think that's what happens. And she likes protecting people and all sorts of stuff. So I see the blood icon happening. Some point. And she becomes a monarch, but not during the training montage. And then Lyndon will be soul smithing as well as helping the others. I guess, understand the scope of the conflict that they're getting into. They all fought a dread God before. However, it was during uh, the, it was within the suppression effects of sacred Valley, as you all know, and many of them haven't fought a dread God at full power. So Lyndon's going to be training them because they're going to have to fight dread gods and monarchs. And Lyndon has the powerful aura of both a dread God and a monarch. So he'll be training them with that for sure. That was confirmed, but he'll, I think he'll also be fighting against them one-on-one -on -one and then um, having them fight against him as a group, as a team without dross. Because with Dross, it's a little bit easier. And I think that everybody's going to come out like with, re like with really good teamwork. Um, as for what Lyndon is soul smithing, I believe Lyndon will be attempting to recreate, with the help of everyone else, the armor that the Eight Man Empire uses to share power. To share power. And I don't think it'll be the same because the eight man empire, their armor, um, it really like they have a, they have two paths effectively. They have their individual path. Then they have the path of the armor as a collective and they can uh, change their formations, which changes like the aura combos, which makes it really hard to fight them because they can reorient, like reorient their formations, uh, to just be stronger. Um, depend, they can basically reorient their formations to counter different things, um, which is it's, it makes them kind of a hard counter to Shaw Miara, if I remember uh, the Abaddon archives a uh, bit about that. All right, uh, let's see. We're moving on. I don't know. Like he's going to make the armor, and we're going to have Zeal as a sage, Yaren as a monarch. And then a couple Arc Lords, Arch Lords, but they're bound to Linden, so they can already share power with Linden. So I don't think it's as much of a problem. Um, and then Mercy can draw power from her book. So there's like a lot of people drawing power from like other objects or things. And so I think Linden's going to study the book. Linden is going to study some of the things that he stole. He's going to study his soul connection with uh orthos and little blue 
Um, he's going to work with Zeal with like scripting and stuff, and he's going to create a lot of cool stuff using Genesis and the Soul Forge. I think that this process is going to bring Lyndon a little bit closer to the concept of creation because his hammer is called Genesis and he got a whiff of the concept of creation when he made Genesis. And so I think that this will help get him closer to that because I don't know, head cannon. We all really hope that Lyndon becomes Adriel 2.0 and he, he, he might not have like full power of creation, but I, I don't know. I think he's going to have some authority over that concept and he's going to get closer during his training montage. All right. Enough of that. Don't forget the Abadamned because two of them are between a rock and a hard place between a mad King and a mad world. I don't see either of them dying. <laughs> If I'm, I, Azrael and Surreal. Yeah, first of all, she's the second most difficult to kill behind the Titan. And Azrael is the Reaper. And wh while they may... I, don't know, I really do think that because Athan used the Origin Shroud, he screwed up Machiel's ability to discern fate around Osriel. That I don't know, something there's gonna be some sort of like gotcha moment during that fight where Machiel's gonna be like, Oh damn it, I screwed up. I must now stoically face the consequences. Now, how does he face those? Does he join the Roshir? Because I kind of see Machiel just like giving up and joining the Roshir. Because like if Osriel and Suriel survive, Machiel then looks into the future now. And he's like, well, I'm going to die and I'm too important to the fate of existence. So I'm going to leave and join the Roshir and break the Eladari Pact and give up my mantle. Because that will blind them to fate. They won't, they won't have a hound. And then with the Froshir, I can, I don't know, cleanse all of existence and make everyone happy little puppets in my grand fate design. I don't know. It's kind of wild, tinfoily and out there. But I that would be cool because I don't see, first of all, the series is called Cradle, right? So most of the conflicts take place on Cradle. There's this interplanetary, multiversal, you know, civil war happening but I don't see it wouldn't make sense for the multiverse to no longer have a big bad. So if the mad King dies, Machiel takes his place, but maybe the mad King doesn't die and Machiel joins him. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. What do y'all think? But that I don't see Osriel dying. I don't see Serial dying. So what happens? Like what, what is the outcome of this battle? What are the repercussions of this battle? And how does the plot get progressed from this battle? Maybe I'm just like, maybe I think plot armor is too strong and Will's going to have some like minor, like red wedding moments. And maybe, maybe Serial dies. I don't know. We've got her marble on the front cover. So she's involved some, some way, shape or form. But I really think that this marble is just Lyndon's like physical, interpretation of like this this is my symbol of the way i don't know but i'd be very interested to hear what y'all think about this but i don't think i don't think osriel dies and i don't think serial dies and i don't think the mad king dies so i have no clue what happens no clue so we're gonna move on uh, to the closing time for monarchs. So this is where we're getting into murky water where I have no idea what's going to happen because we don't have any information. I don't know how Will's going to solve the problem of getting the monarchs off of cradle, get it. And then like keeping them off of cradle because it's built into the magic system for a sage or a herald to have 
path to monarchy. And then once you're a monarch, you can kill everyone. Um, so there's a lot here that could or couldn't happen. And it just comes down to how Will is going to solve this problem. Uh, there's also the problem of, of Lyndon being a dread god and that being something that doesn't historically allow for ascension beyond the planet. I think Lyndon is probably immune to this, but I also think there's going to be something that he has to do to fix things for himself so that he can progress. But I do think he's going to ascend with Dread God, like hunger absorption skills, which is probably going to be his path to a higher tier of power quickly in the multiverse, which I don't know if we'll ever even get to see. I hope so. I hope so. So, we know that the team is going to go and fight the Dread Gods and try to kill them and absorb their power so that Lyndon can be a super soldier. More of one than he already is. Yaren could very likely absorb the Bleeding Phoenix. And that might be how she, one, gets a deeper connection to both blood and hunger. And two, gets enough raw, like, blood aura to complete her, get it, become as strong of, of a herald as she can. That makes sense to me. Because I don't think that Yaren's going to progress to Monarch until later in the book. And we know they're going for the Dread Gods, so the Bleeding Phoenix situation makes a lot of sense. Uh, do we have anyone that's related to Earth on the team? Not really. I know that Zeal felt like he was a mountain uh, when et cetera, et cetera, happened uh, in Ghostwater at the very beginning. He hates the Weeping Dragon, though. Um, but I, I could see him like using the time abilities of like the Time Queen to help kill the Wandering Titan, which would kind of be poetic in its way where the wandering Titan is the one that was able to fight off the time queen and, and kill her. And then that time power is then used on the wandering Titan to kill it. That's kind of poetic. That could be cool. Uh, but of course, Zeal wants to kill the weeping dragon and that's what they're going to be doing next. And then we have the monarchs and this is interesting. This is very interesting because monarchs are and like they're just a part of cradle they weren't originally supposed to be but they are like the fact that the nine cloud family the shah family was able they had so many powerful sacred artists that they were able to come up with a technique for like basically cheating the system and just passing it on like Avatar style, like Last Airbender style. That's nuts. And so I don't, they're like the oldest family in existence or close to it. Their empire has been around forever. Not forever, but almost forever, effectively forever. What does Shamiara do? Maybe she's like, cool, I, I'll ascend after being a monarch for like a, two years. I, I haven't had time to groom like a predecessor so that I, I can't use my, you know, succession ability. I can't stay. Shit. What do I do? I already got Reliar here. He, he He's a herald. He's chill. That's going to be an interesting one. I mean, I don't really see. I don't, we're going to, here's another fun fact. We're going to get to see all of the, uh, all the monarchs combat capabilities most likely oh wow how fascinating would that be if like shamiara joins them she won't but if she did she could like insta insta subdue north strider anyone with like a very like obvious power set she wins eight man empire is kind of her her counter as i said uh I don't know if I said that, but yeah, I did earlier, like with their formations. Shaw Miara can't counter them. They're a hard counter for her because it's so complex and they can change what they're doing. So they can change what she's able to counter. 
they're already on the side. And I see them and Emrys joining the team or joining the alliance, the alliance against Monarchs on Cradle 2023. I see them joining. And so it's going to be kind of a, a pretty interesting conflict. How North Strider gets gets taken down. That's going to be interesting because we have like a the, like an Oracle versus Oracle situation happening where Dross goes against his master. That'll be interesting to see. We've got a situation in which Mercy goes against her mother. That will be interesting. In the end, there's going to be a bunch of cool fights. Some cool stuff's going to happen, and uh, the team is going to is going to accomplish the first part of their goal in getting people to leave. But how do they maintain a level of non-monarchy on the planet? Well, I think the eight man empire is kind of like the blueprint for that. But instead of, I don't know, there's going to have to be multiple sets of, of armor that different nations can have because each, I feel like each of these like founding families who will probably make some sort of like non monarchy pact, including clan Aurelius. Cause they're coming over to the Ashwin continent when the portal opens up and that'll be cool because that's some, that's something I need to talk about too, uh, that I forgot about until just this moment. But I think that there, it, it would be interesting if each of these factions gets an armor set where they can have a sage and a herald or a couple sages and a couple heralds, as like the protectors of whatever. And then they all join in, in their like council of non-monarchs policing the planet. And honestly, they could, they could help people who are close to, you know, ascending with ascension and stuff. Like that would be cool. It could, it could be this whole thing. And then Cradle could become uh, an even better recruitment drive for Celestial Space Wars. That could be fun. But the Aurelius family is now coming from Rose Gold to Ashwin using that portal. And I wonder what that means. Because they will likely be joining forces with Weishi Linden Aurelius and Yaren Aurelius. And the Aurelius branch on the Black or the Ashwin continent. Well, the current Aurelius clan is with the sect of twin stars in Sacred Valley. As far as we know, the portal opens up in the Black Flame Empire near Serpent's Grave. A Serpent's Grave just got torched by Ragon Shen. And yeah, that would be really cool. Because now, like, it, that makes me feel like there's going to be, like, a war. <laughs> like, a legitimate war. And that's no good, because who would the war be of? Uh, House Shen, potentially. House Shen and the Nine Cloud uh, Empire against, I don't know, against our hometown heroes. I don't, you know, I, I really, I feel like the... Uh, like Akura Malice will be like one of the first that they take that they take care of that they take out or like forced to ascend because you know they have charity they don't have a herald however Mercy will probably be a herald and so Mercy and uh, Charity can wear the armor together they're like purple we're not a monarch but we have the power of a monarch armor which is ironic because they have their their bloodline armor. So that's kind of what I think is going to go down. I think that I didn't really say what I, I thought was going to go down properly, but team's going to get out. They're going to fight the dread gods. Uh, they're going to consume their power. Linden is going to be like OP strong. And because he's OP strong with his friends, they're going to go one by one and try to like take down the monarchs. The monarchs are going to see what's happening, join forces. And then there's going to be like a conflict. Well, then the team's going to win 
And then they're going to have all these like armor sets where you join this pact. Here's your soul oath. You're not a monarch, so you can't break a soul oath. Um, and because you all know about the, the Abaddon, your fate, the fate of the planet now includes that. So we're going to be outside of that, you know, Eladari pact. So we're going to come back and smack you around if anyone tries to, to monarch it up uh, on this planet. And then I don't know. I don't know what else, but I, I really feel like it's just going to be like the threat of Linden and team, as well as this network of heralds and sages that have armor that links them, that allows them to have the power of a monarch so they can suppress a monarch until that monarch can ascend and they'll help the monarch ascend, you know? Send them right to a uh, threshold or whatever that planet's called that has the bars on it. The, the, the prisons, the space prison bars where Fury is. We could get a, a that could be where we get a cameo of Fury because we've been told that's going to happen. We will see Fury again, probably in a cameo situation. And how funny would that be if Malice gets kicked off planet and then Fury is more powerful than she is and gets to like, like, oh, hey, mom, we haven't ever had a good fight. Let's have a fight. And then he wins. And then she gets uh, she gets humbled in, in the wider cosmos. Uh, all right. So let's move on because this is like epilogue adjacent. I think there's going to be some nation building uh, components because Lyndon leaving that, that would create a power vacuum. So here's kind of a crazy little tinfoil hat thing. And I guess it's not that tinfoil because there is some stuff in the books to support it. But I don't think Lyndon leaves right away. I don't think any of them leave right away. I think that like. Lyndon and Yaren might have children. And then. Oh, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know because they saw futures of themselves where they have where Lyndon has, he creates a bloodline, like a unique bloodline. And that unique bloodline could be that like <laughs> his descendants are able to like naturally fight off the, the concept of hunger, but they can use hunger to acquire power more easily uh, with multiple cores. And there's potential for like some core war trolling. If you're watching and you don't understand the reference to the core wars back when Lyndon first split his core and there were people on Reddit to argue arguments began to take place. Once Lyndon added a path to one of his pure cores, the core wars broke out where people thought that Lyndon was going to split his cores and adopt different, I guess, Madra affinities or Madra aspects to his core so that he could have everything. Despite the fact that within the book, multiple people have told Lyndon that that's stupid. Um, but, you know, if these kids, these descendants have like a combo bloodline from both of their parents with the aspects of hunger, like maybe their 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 blood, like their blood or within their body is stronger and they're I mean, shit, like. These kids could have stronger dream aura, blood aura, uh, stronger lifelines. They could have uh, an affinity towards, um, you know, the hunger. They could have an affinity towards any of their parents' paths. So they could have some, they, they could have a cool bloodline. And I, I think it'd be weird if we don't get that addressed. So that's probably epilogue -y. But there's going to be nation building. And... I'm excited to see what that looks like. It will probably be glossed over because I don't think Will wants to write that very much. Um, so it'll probably there, there might be a time skip, and then we get to to get instant gratification uh, in, on what has been built. Uh, I think I don't know. I kind of think Orthos and Blue stay behind, but they might go out. They might ascend as well. I think Mercy stays behind to pair up with uh, charity, but all that depends on what the solution is for uh, hunger aura and the con like 
the fact that monarchs can come up whenever. So that's, I mean, that's kind of what I think. That's that's. We haven't come close to exhausting my thoughts on Waybound, but this video hasn't been the most linear video anyway. And I think that if I kept going, it would be just all over the place. So to quickly recap, Lyndon and team will be doing their training montage in the hyperbolic time chamber. Osriel and Surreal will successfully defend uh, the assassination attempt. Machiel will do something very irrational, which is against who he is, but he'll think it's rational, and join the uh, Vrochir. Then our team emerges much stronger and drama ensues. They beat the crap out of the Weeping Dragon. Zeal gets his revenge. Linden gets much stronger. They go and they raffle stomp the Bleeding Phoenix. They might, they might not do the Bleeding Phoenix first. They might take out the Wandering Titan first because the Wandering Titan is on Ashwind. And they might get asked to do that because the Aurelius clan has come from Rose Gold over and are gonna are gonna join up with the sect of twin stars. Uh, but regardless, they are going to raffle stomp the bleeding phoenix, and I believe Yaren is going to use it as a giant progression battery uh, to fuel her advancement to the end of Herald and to absorb and steal some concepts of uh, the authority of blood. Uh, which she then uses to uh, manifest the blood icon, taking her to monarchy and completing uh, her journey of uh, hypocrisy. Because now she is uh, a blood monarch on a team of people who don't want monarchs around, uh, having been the disciple of the sword sage, making, uh, completing her journey of uh, I do whatever I want. So that's fun. Then we have the Team Linden Monarch faction versus the Team Monarch I Want to Stay a Monarch Forever faction. And lots of combat ensues. Go team. There will probably be some deaths. Uh, I don't think Raygon Shen will be one of them, but I could see North Strider dying. I could see North Strider dying and his codex being absorbed by Dross. And then, so Dross ends up being North Strider's legacy. And Dross gets supercharged and gets information on all the others. Honestly, they might take out North Strider first, take all his information on Ragon Shen, and there might be an epic battle between Linden and Ragon Shen. And it would kind of mirror uh, what happened when they fought down in the labyrinth. But like, like, because Linden has fought Ragon Shen in the labyrinth, has opposed him. Oh man! Now I'm now. Oh, I'm glad I did this recap because now I'm thinking about some stuff. Picture this, y'all. They take out North Strider, learn how to beat Ragon Shen. Linden, as the Void Sage, fights Ragon Shen with help of, I don't know, Zeal maybe, or Yer, or well, whoever, or like a Yer and Zeal like armor combo. Ragon Shen tries to use Tiberian. Linden frees Tiberian. Tiberian returns to the Aurelius faction. As a monarch remnant, is able to like, I don't know, consolidate himself in some way. And uh, maybe be like like a protector. Who knows if a monarch's remnant puts the same weight as a monarch. But Tiberian, we haven't forgotten about you. We almost forgot about you, but we haven't. You could be a piece to this puzzle. So Tiberian frees, is freed and goes about his business. Ragon Shen freaks out. Uh, does something rash, drama ensues, and Ragon Shen ends up uh, ascending. 
I think. I think Raygon Shen ascends, y'all. I do. I think North Strider dies. I think Raygon Shen ascends. Malice, I don't know. As I said, I I kind of hope that Malice ascends because the main thing Malice wants is to protect humanity. And let's be real. There's a lot more humans off-world than there are on Cradle. So Malice can go protect humanity throughout the multiverse. She has a beautiful future ahead of her. It could be like a mother-son duo, you know, fighting crime. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that I think that would be fun. The Nine Cloud Court. I kind of see Shaw Miara like sacrificing herself to like imbue her power and authority and leave it behind in some way, shape, or form that allows the Nine Cloud Court to uh, remain safe. Because the the Nine Cloud Monarch has always put their people first, it seems like. It very much seems like. And that, I don't know. They seem somewhat selfless because they created a technique that allows them to like have someone that they're close to inherit their power and then they die like permanently forever. That's pretty selfless. So there's like a level of selflessness built into their sacred arts. So maybe uh, Shamiara sacrifices herself in some way. I don't think she ascends. She like has barely lived any life. Maybe that's what like the time jump helps with where Shamiara like agrees with their pact but agrees that like on like this timetable we're going to do this which allows Linden to nation build and then all all together once the monarchs are in agreement they can suppress any other monarchs whatever uh then they leave so i i think the eight man empire emrys linden's crew and maybe shamiara work together to like police and make sure the dread gods never rise again since linden controls the labyrinth and is considered a dread god Linden can just like he'll be able to sense when they're going to be reborn and just smack them down. While that happens, he'll be figuring out how he can ascend. And then everyone will be way bound and then we'll get epilogues on everybody else. And then the book will end. And we'll all be sad. But it will be it will have been a great journey and we will remember it fondly. And then we can start talking about book one of Plasma Bolts because it will have already come out. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about, uh, there's, I'm going to make another video about what I want to see in the epilogue or what I hope to see in the epilogue in terms of like plot lines that get closed and how I think that could be cool. But primarily, I, uh, I just want to bring up when I think the books will come out. Also, I want to make one mention of something that I brought up earlier that I didn't actually talk about. Uh, but I think that I think that Waybound comes out 2023, maybe the summer of 2023, maybe a year from the last book. I have no idea. No one has any idea. I think we might see the Plasma Bolts book early next year, like on a normal, normal cadence. So like the end of Q1, it's like March, April, May, perhaps. Maybe they don't want to do book releases at this like close together. Who knows? But we can speculate that more as time goes on. Um, and I do more like solo casting with the podcast. But the concept, that, like the thing I wanted to talk about before I ended this video, when you ascend, I believe your path becomes a lot more rigid like cradle you're supposed to know your path and become comfortable with it make the changes that you want to make and then when you ascend it like solidifies it then you progress on your path as far as you can 
So you want to have like a good, strong path. And by path, I don't mean like your sacred arts path per se. I mean the like what you like who you want to be, what you believe in. These are your um, like your revelations through the Lord realm. So Lyndon's revelation was I want everything or like we want everything. So as long as like he's. I don't know, progressing with his people, he's furthering his path. And for someone to say something like we want everything that's very open ended probably has a lot of like resource requirements to progress, but has potential to be like extremely powerful, especially with like the components of what makes up his soul. He has a very destructive side and a very cleansing like side. And then he can create things and his one of his, like his icon is the void icon. Um, so he can like hide from fate and, and stuff. He'll probably get another icon at some point, but what I'm getting at is that like, he has like a very like hard but like obvious path of progression in in the wider cosmos. Yaren, hers is going to be around like probably protecting or like fighting strong people or whatever. And so she'll have to do the same thing to progress in this next magic system and then so on and so forth for all the others that end up ascending. Uh, but it it you no longer get as much of a chance of like changing things. And we know this because when Osriel became Osriel, he tried to change things about who he was. That's why he switched to being a soul smith before he ascended. But he had already been able to access the way in a way that was like really probably more than he should have. And so he his other paths were closed to him. And then, and then he ascended and he definitely couldn't change it, even though he tried. And so he just went deeper and deeper into pure destruction until he became like the purest form, the highest form of authority of pure destruction. Uh, so that's something that might be why we see the team not immediately ascend because they need to like shore up their pre-ascension foundations before going out into the cosmos while they nation build, while they create a political structure that keeps monarchs from birthing themselves on cradle and not leaving uh the labyrinth might have anyway i'm not i'm gonna stop theorizing this video is ending now uh, i really appreciate you all watching for the just under an hour uh this this video length was um keep keep supporting me in the comments uh because they really helped in that last video make me want to keep doing these so yeah show me some love and uh, I'll show you some love by making more videos. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.